I'm going to review Dragon's Ferdinand Premium, kit number 6317. Now, this is from 2007. Uh, I have a bit of a, let's call it a gripe, with uh, Ferdinand Elephant kits from Dragon because they're old. There have been a few premiums, three, actually, um, and then some, um, like, not premium, but updated stuff. But it all roots back to this 2000 kit, and that annoys me, because it's pretty old. They could retool this by now. Even, at least just the wheels or something. Or, I mean, they've retooled a lot of it, but I, sometimes it just annoys me that they don't just newly tool these things. Uh, so here, So here's how it goes. In 2000, there was an elephant kit, 6126. Shortly after that, in 01, there was 6133, which was the first Ferdinand kit. And these are basically the, you know, parents of all of these kits that have come out. They didn't put another one for five years until the elephant premium came out. That's 6311. Then came this guy in 2007, 6317. Since then... There was this bizarre white box final vehicle 6436 in 07, then the Zimmerit Elephant 6465 in 09, and then the Kursk Premium Ferdinand 6495 in 2012. Now I need to talk about that one real quick because often people shopping for decent Ferdinand or Elephant kits see that there are two Premium Ferdies and they're nearly identical, even to people who do know. Uh, so the difference between the Kursk Ferdinand, which on the box art is facing that way, and this one, is there's a decal sheet in the Kursk one so that you can make any vehicle that was there, and then I believe there's one extra, like, photo-etched toolbox. And that, apart from that, they're identical. So if there's, like, a huge price difference, you might not want to worry too much about, you know, why you should get one, because they're basically the same. Marking options, straight up Dunkelgelb, and then two two-tones. I'm going to go for the spider webby thing, probably nearly identical to what this looks like. So decals for this are sparse, as in, like, three vehicles, whereas that other premium has quite a few. As is the case with premiums, they don't show you... Uh, 3D renders, they show you built-up kits, and they highlight the etch. Um, I've heard bad things about these etch fenders. I've heard they're horrible. Haven't tried them yet, but lots of metal stuff in here, though. Very large PE as well. Looking at the back, that's pretty clean for a dragon. Magic tracks. Tools without clamps that go into a all PE box. Metal barrel, and then again, I'm very—I don't know. I've I've read that you shouldn't try to use these by some pretty experienced guys. They were like, "Well, if you just ignore that, you're fine." Okay, so the instructions. Not a lot unused. difficult today. So, kind of strange that everything's shaded. Uh, you can tell we're looking at um, some dated parts here. That's one of the things I was kind of griping about. Wheels fine if they're two-piece and the drive sprocket's fine, but like these types of bogies you would normally never see in halves on modern kits. That's kind of an old school way of doing it. You're gonna have a seam around everything. Yeah, they're not terribly visible, but that's annoying. And that's a very, very simple suspension. Just halves of the bogies, these two little bits, and they go on there. Wheels are suggested to go on. They are steel wheels, so in theory you could do that if you want. I still don't. Here they're telling you about that you should build magic tracks. And I, I don't know, by the way, I've seen some people do this, taking this opportunity to put the magic tracks on, then you can take them back off as long as you... What I would do is white glue the sprockets and wheels on, do the magic tracks while I had easy access to everything, making sure that they could be slipped back on when the fenders are on, though. That's the tough part. Um, you need to have that maybe here be the point where they're not glued so you can 
pop that off and pull down easily and then slide through. It's actually kind of an annoying process. But that's already up to step seven. Okay, so here they're calling out metal parts. The rear plate looks awfully simple. Everything looks actually quite simple. Which is kind of a... I'm not used to seeing that on drag and stuff. Here we've got an over overly complex jack block. So that's one of the weird things about premiums that you'll see is that you get very simple plastic assemblies and then just crazy etch things that like boggle your mind. Um, here's a modern jack that they're throwing in there. These instructions are giving me hell, my apologies. This doesn't want to fold how I want it to. Okay. Step 13, here we have the etch fender stuff. Are these separate etch pieces they're calling out? Mm -hmm. Looks like it, so it's not just a bending situation, it's a gluing together situation? Ew. And that's where they'd go on. And these are, by the look of it, workable hinges here? the front like don't like that <laughs> and here is some PE stuff as well like just this is a box this toolbox which is funny because if you don't leave it open it's gonna be pointless huh right so then the gun breech has a dated look to it, two halves, just... Normally, I think nowadays you'd see this bit would be separate and this cylinder would be saying you kind of... you build it this way instead of building it this way. So it has a bit of a dated look to it, the breech style. You're not going to see much in there. It's a pretty big hatch, though. The outside of the superstructure, the hatches have some PE. Quite a bit actually. Then here you can see the sort of original version of things going together. And it looks sufficiently busy out there. Like just little bits to add to that very blocky superstructure. And here you're assembling the engine deck. This looks like final assembly. I'm not even sure what this little guy here is. I'm trying to look for it. No, it's a hatch. It's just optional. Etch versus plastic. Periscopes, tiny little etch to go on periscopes. Here's your options for barrels. You've got metal barrel or old school two piece barrel. No one's gonna do that. Travel lock, and then tow cables. And that's it. The marking options that they suggest, or the only ones that they have, the 3-4, are uh, 624, which is the famous <coughs> Kursk looking Ferdy, and then I assume actually all of these could have been at Kursk, but this is what a, a Kursk Ferdinand looks like to me. It's got green spider web camo on Dunkelgeld. In the box, we have Tiger P Magic Tracks. Now, there are some, I think there's a wrong and a right type of these. They made some that were wrong. I can't offhand tell you. I think it has to do with, like, the guide teeth. If the guide teeth were, like, every link or every couple links. Cause you, I think these have... Yeah, like, these have guide teeth and these don't. So it's like every other one, but there's there's some things I don't know about Tiger P tracks, but so I'm not even sure if these are correct for a Cursed Ferdinand. I'm going to say that they are. 
Uh, or at least I'm going to say that as I'm gluing them to this kit because I'm not going to get special tracks for this thing because these are good enough. Dragon card. Pretty stocked with stuff. There's the metal barrel, which is pretty big. It only goes up to here, unlike the Nashorn one, which is like that long. The metal barrel. Here we've got toe shackles and the pins. We've got a little plastic sprue of... I have no idea what that is. Strange looking. Um, there's our muzzle brake for the Pack 43. There's our decals, 124, 624, and 113. Also is a tow cable, which looks smaller and stuff. I was going to say smaller and darker, but I don't know if that matters. Maybe they're annealing them themselves, but I doubt that. There's some of our PE. Sorry for the glare. Um, yeah, it's some really fiddly stuff. Our periscopes, and then here's our monstrous toolbox and fender PE. This is the reason this thing's going to sit in the stash for a while. <sighs> I just I don't see it going well. <laughs> but hey, uh, I'm going to try it sometime. So that's a decent amount of goodies for sure. I tend to end with haul tubs, so I'm going to start with it this time. There's the hull tub. It is predictably massive for a tiger. Tiger peas are pretty long, and and they're wide. So, like, there's a stug. So I guess they're not that big. Um, but it's it's pretty. Ferdinand's a big vehicle, but it does feel a little dumbed down. I don't know how else to describe that. The plastic's a little thick. A little bit spongy. It's going to be like this on every Ferdinand, because they're going to use these parts for all of them. And the older you go in the series, you're going to get less refinement on some of these things, like the rivets. I mean, that detail is crisp enough on those wheel stations, and there is rolled steel there, you can see it. But it doesn't quite feel up to the standard that I'm used to. It's simplified, and you can tell it's pretty simple. I mean, maybe the vehicle just was, but... I don't know, I'm pretty good at being able to sort of tell when something was made. And this reeks of the early 2000s, this this molding. The bottom detail's okay. I mean, believe me, this stuff is very crisp and very good, but it just isn't quite what they're doing now. Now we got the superstructure. Pretty big. The weld looks really good where the plates meet right there. This actually seems a little more retooled perhaps than that hull is. At least the detail there looks pretty good. There's the rolled texture. Obviously the inside looks terrible. <laughs> this is not bad. This is more like what I want to see. Just the crispness of the welds and stuff. I'm okay with this. So there's not a lot to this as it is a updated old kit. So here's the first sprue. These are our styrene fenders, which have diamond plate, right there and the molded on hinges now all this would be done with PE and metal if if they have if you do what they have you do right or what they suggest you do some of these parts just seem very smooth and simple larger than I'm used to as well it's not flashy it's just not quite new like that stud dated jack assembly There's a very old school tool with the crappy clamps. It all seems clean, um, but a little spongy, to be honest. There's a 
another one. Try to get my hand out of the way, sorry. Again, it's clean. Some of it, you know, that stuff's, it's not terribly spongy in, in, in this sort of detail, but the overall crispness of the parts is, like the corners won't be quite as tight. That's the kind of stuff that I look at, or the plastic will be thicker than it needs to be. If you compare the the new 3-in-1 Nashorn parts to the old premium parts, they are, like, the premium parts are twice as thick. Um, I'm talking thickness this way, like, there. Here's the engine deck, though. That looks pretty good. Yeah, these guys are a little spongy here. I don't know what those are, but... It looks alright. I don't know how much upgrading the tooling had from the time that it was initially made until five years later when they re-released it this time, but... This thing reeks of old stuff. Um, an older style gun. Which I know, you can make these look very good. I, I am not trying to say these sorts of things can't be built up well. They can. I'm just kind of comparing modern modern kits to older kits. It's a travel lock. Again, everything feels a little bit bulky. There's that the halves of the gun breech. Leave a horrible seam. Seems all right. Nothing special though. Then we've got two of this and then a half. And you get these a lot. Like that's that's half of one of these. So what is on there are wheels, the sprockets, and the, I think on a Tiger P, both ends, like the front and back, have sort of a sprocket type thing. Oops, I'm bending stuff. These were the smallest parts, clearly, on this thing. They don't seem flashy, but again, the, the level of detail and the fidelity of the mold is just a little bit spongy. Sprockets look good. The wheels seem... okay. I really, really don't like that they did these things in two halves. It's such an old-school way of doing it. So the only things left are a couple of these modern added bits. So your your towing, I believe that's the clevis. I don't know if that's the clevis, and then like the the shackle is the U-shaped thing. I'm not entirely 100% on those terminologies. Never serves in a tank, seriously. Everything I learned, I learned from books and YouTube. So, but yeah, these are well. That jack still is only a few parts. No, that's, that's a good number of parts. Six, seven parts. And you've got your tools without clamps. Now you will notice, the keen observer, something is missing here. Uh, four is missing. More than likely, could have been the hammer. Um, I look through stuff when I get it, at least I used to before I would review it, and if I needed it for hack and slash or something, I would just steal it if it wasn't called for. So this something goes here. I think it's a hammer that's on the back of my Yag Panther. But those look great. Those are modern and there's nothing wrong with this stuff. Then the ends for our tow cable. Well, I have reservations about uh, premium kits in general. The PE stuff feels a little bit um, too intense, at least for like for me, who builds the standard smart kits, it feels a little bit intimidating, especially those fenders. And then the plastic is a bit dated. 
So I, I wish it was somewhere more in the middle. I would prefer a new, newer tooled one. Um, I would really like to see a side by side of the Tamiya one with the uh, this one built up, just to see detail comparisons and stuff. So it's it's the best thing out there. Both uh, Ferdinand premiums are the best thing you can get for a you know Curse Gear Ferdinand, but uh, it's not what I prefer. But it is good for what it is.